going to be changing the water pump today on this 97 Detroit 12.7 liter and let's see where the um, thing is leaking at right under this oil stick here it doesn't always leak here that comes and goes but it is leaking there a little bit right now seems to be worse about it when it's not running when it's just parked for some reason uh, I may have to take that oil stick off. I don't know how far in this pump goes. It's probably going to hit that. Never changed one before. There's a little bit of a spot on the floor underneath it there. One thing I know for sure since I've had to take antifreeze out of this truck a number of times in the 16 years that I've been driving it, I know I need three five gallon buckets, brand new uh, pipe here, lower pipe. That thing was with antifreeze was four hundred dollars but I didn't buy the antifreeze at the dealer I got the cheap stuff at the farm supply the straight antifreeze just regular car antifreeze put like what was it eight gallons I think in and then topped it off with water so that pipes gonna be coming back off and uh, be changing the the uh, hose, I knew it was going to change the water pump when I changed the pipe, so I didn't bother changing the hose yet. Not this one, but the one underneath. I mean, this one looks like it's good, but I'll probably change that too. What I see that I need to do right off the bat is all of these fittings on here got to come off. I think there's only two down there. One up here and then uh, this one up here that goes to the thermostat and of course this pipe here I don't know if I can work with this pipe on there or not might be able to twist it out of the way but I don't know we'll find out looks like this oil stick is going to have to come out unbolt that from down here and get that out of there Maybe I'm thinking it sure looks that way. I don't know how far in this gear goes. This is gear drive That is my intro on this. Let me get the tools out here I'll drain this antifreeze out and Into these buckets get that out of the way and then we'll get started on getting this pump off of here. I'm sure everyone knows to take the radiator cap off um, in my case, it's not the radiator, it's this overflow thing. But, uh, that's where the cap goes there, and it's off so that it can breathe and the antifreeze comes out a little quicker. It's going to be about a one and a half for that one. About a one and three eighths for that one. Saves me running around checking a bunch of different wrenches when they're that big. A lot of rust and paint on that nut. I already got this pipe off of there and I just stuffed it back here out of the way. I tried to break this loose with the open end of the wrench and I couldn't do it. So it looks like there's barely enough room to get this end of it on there and then I can double wrench it. See if it'll let me break it loose like this. Oh man, this is tight. Oh, there it goes. Now that it broke, maybe I can do this by hand. So 
Sorry, I didn't show you about the double wrenching. Let me showed that on a bunch of videos before, but I'll do it again. Just take the other wrench, hook it on there like that, break it loose, and that's what I did to get it loose. Takes a special kind of hose clamp pliers to get these off, and this is it here. I mean, you could fight with it, and get them off other ways. It's got a notch in it on the side for getting them from the side, and it's got one on the end uh, from getting them on the ends. So when I was a car mechanic, I think it was Chrysler cars that had these on them. Everything else just use the screw clamp. The clamps with the screw on them. I think this hose clamp better go on up to the top like that one did. Uh oh, the hose is swollen too much. It's not going to go. That hose loose off of there. There we go. I'll have to replace that hose because I just gouged it out pretty good with the pliers. But it's 22 years old. Needs to be replaced anyway. Probably the best thing to do is cut the thing off. I'm trying to get it to slide up there. It doesn't want to slide very good. It's going a little bit. I'm trying to get this oil uh, stick tube out and I'm having an, a problem with it. I, I broke this nut loose right here, this three-quarter nut. I'm not trying to get this one, this adapter out because I know what that is. But this one here, this is obviously going to be a flare fitting, but it's, uh, it's stuck. So I'm going to stick a bolt in, in the top of this and hit it with a hammer because this is stuck on here and um, I can't really get in here with a, a, um, a pipe wrench and besides that it's so thin that it might just crush that and, and break it and I don't want to do that and have to buy a new one. So let's see if putting a bolt in the top of this will knock that loose. I mean hitting it with a hammer. Let's see if that will knock it loose. I don't know if I can do this on camera or not. I'll try. Can't really get at it very good, but I'm going to try here. It may have done it already. I don't know. That is still too tight. I may have to replace that. Well, well let's see what we wind up having to do. Well, unfortunately, it's not going to come out. I'm just going to have to break it off and replace it. As far as I can tell, I have all the hoses off. The only thing that's left is these four bolts that hold the water pump onto the gear case and this uh, dipstick tube, which I bent out of the way. And um, 
who knows it might still be usable when I straighten it back out but if not I'm gonna to have to replace it but it's not coming out the way it's supposed to so this part of dealing with a really old truck turns out there's only three bolts holding this thing on uh, at least that's all I can find bolt hole wise on the new one I was looking for another fourth bolt on this couldn't find it I'm using this extendable ratchet made by Husky I bought it at Home Depot when I say these store names I know there's people in other countries that don't have some of these stores but anyway it's just a big hardware store a great big hardware store I'm breaking them loose with that and I'm going to use the air ratchet to finish getting them out got all the bolts out as far as I could tell before I uh, knock this pump loose and pull it off and get some of this dirt out of there because I don't really care too much about little pieces of dirt getting in the cooling system but I really don't want it in the oil so Should be out, I see all of the seal. Oh. There we have it. I gotta bring this inside and take these fittings off for the heater and put those on the new one. Since I have limited space to work with underneath the truck before I take them off when I lay this out on the floor I'm going to take a picture of how they're on there so that I can get it as close as I can when I put it back together I can look at the picture and make sure I got the angles right because it's going to be hard to find those angles and move things around once this is mounted. Got rusty threads on this. I'll have to get a tap and clean that off. putting new hoses on I would put silicone hose on like it has but these are already bought because I had to replace one of these a couple months ago and it had this type of hose on it on the upper radiator pipe it lasted 22 years so all I need is another five to ten years out of it this should be okay it's about an inch long. I'll whack that off. And I got some extra here because I got two or three spots that I'm going to be changing the hoses.
think that's all I need off of that old one. This one here was already on, looks like a three quarters. I'll try to tighten that up a little bit, make sure it's tight. It's smaller than that. I'm going to get some Teflon tape to put on those threads before I put them in and tighten them up a little bit. I'm putting my hose clamp on with the bolt facing straight back so that I know I can get at it with a ratchet or something, um, making sure it's not to one side or the other or facing forward where I won't be able to get at it with any tools. I think I'm ready to put this back on. Made it back from Freightliner bought two of these. I wish I could have just bought it by the foot and bought a, a foot of it and cut it in half. Look like three inch pieces, three and a half inch maybe. This one had a split in the side from me trying to get it off of the pliers and then when I was showing somebody I just stretched it and it just started tearing and then I pulled a little bit more and the whole thing just it just tore right in half. There's just nothing left and of course it's original it's 22 years old it did good to last that long but um, the price fourteen dollars a piece and the one on top i thought well i better get that too the other end of that pipe because if i don't sure enough it'll break on me <laughs> dipstick tube $17 they got it. I don't know if I'm going to put it in or not. I might be able to straighten the old one out and use it. Well, going ahead and change these. I'm going to change the upper one on top. It's um, right here. can't put the camera monitor where I can see it because of where the sun is right now. It's a little bit of a problem. I'm using this boom here to mount the camera on and and there's I gotta put the the cart where where I can see the uh, the monitor inside that box there on the cart. I have to hide it from the sun so I can see it. So it's uh, just stretching things out in an uncomfortable position here. I've been spending the last 15 minutes or so scraping and chiseling at the edges around this pipe all the way around. I'm going to take it over to the brush wheel, clean it up some more. And since it cost me four hundred and something dollars to change this pipe here and or almost four hundred like three hundred and fifty dollars or so for the pipe but then another you know fifty for antifreeze and whatnot but it was the only pipe in the country and it took them over a week to get it here for me to get it so it's obviously not um, they're not being made anymore and so I don't know if this one well, this one probably is. This is a Detroit engine, and it's not just an old 97 FLD, so it should should still be in circulation. But still, I'm I'm going to fix it. I'm going to clean it up, and I'm going to rust treat it and paint it and put it on tomorrow. I've got the new dipstick tube here, and this 
spins around like it's supposed to on this one it's it's jammed pretty tight and I had to bend this to get the thing out of there bend it way the wrong way and I'm going to try to straighten it out I might be able to straighten this out and save it for later since it didn't cost too terribly much but I'll go ahead and put this one on there and now I'm ready to pick up the water pump and put it in there I'm going to reach in this gear case in here I hope you can see what I'm doing and I'm just going to grab some oil with my fingers and wipe it on this seal all the way around there's no directions that's just what I feel like doing and I'm going to wipe it around the hole here too that this water pump goes in it's clean because I wiped it off pretty good when I put the, pulled the old pump out this thing is heavy but not extremely I'm going to say 35 40 pounds something already Just pushing on it and twisting it. And it seems to be dropping right into place. Let me go get the bolts. Get all my bolts started, the thread started before I tighten anything down. Everything's threading good. This one's a little bit tight. I don't know what else to do on this video other than to tighten down the the oil stick, the, um, the, uh, the dipstick tube, which is just common sense, just tighten it with the open end wrench. I might put a little plug in for this set of, of, um, of wrenches from Harbor Freight. They were like 20 bucks for these extra long wrenches. It was a whole set from like I don't know if it started at 5 sixteenths or not. It goes all the way up to an inch or something like that. It's pretty. It's a very good deal for the price, and they're extra long. They're almost probably half, again, longer than regular wrenches. So, so far, they haven't given me any trouble. They haven't acted like they were going to bend or strip or anything, so I think they're pretty good. They're very good for the price. And that's what I'm using on these because I can actually reach underneath the frame here right now it's on the bottom of the dipstick tube so that's good it's got a nice reach I'm just going to go ahead and put the hoses back on and I uh, have to wait until tomorrow to put that pipe on on top that uh, that was had the rust issue that I'm cleaning up and painting and I'll be repainting this radiator pipe um, not now because it's brand new but within a year or two, a couple of years or so, I'll repaint it again as soon as I start to see any signs of rust on it. Because at that price, and it was the only one in the country, who knows if they're going to make another one or not. It might be a junkyard item only from now on. So I'll just keep repainting it and getting it uh, cleaned up and ready to, to keep going. Antifreeze on the inside should keep it from rusting inside out, but it's the outside that rusted out on it. I'm going to show a little situation I'm running into trying to put this black pipe or the pipe that I just painted black this one on top here that I have to do one I gotta put the hoses on that pipe itself got the one spring clamp that I'm going to reuse sitting on top of it and then the other one sitting on the water pump down here and the last thing I'm going to do is, is work this 
piece of hose back onto the water pump. Up here on top, what it appears that I have to do in order to make it fit, since we're in such a tight place here, so you just won't move backwards, it hits the air conditioner uh, bracket, alternator bracket. So I have to slide the hose all the way on until the metal pipe is almost coming out of the hose in here. So here's about half an inch and we got the swollen part right there. Had to slide it on there and then slide it from the once I get the hose in position down below you know get this part on the water pump then I gotta slide this part onto the thermostat housing. So that's what I'm running into in case someone has a issue trying to figure out how to get that on that's what's working out for me got the bottom one in position down there and I got both of my clamps in here and I got the the screw part of the clamps up on top so that I got access to them now I'm ready to of course I can't do it with one hand but I'm ready to work this uh, hose back on there and clamp it down but always make sure you got your hoses, hose clamps in a position where you're able to tighten them. It's not fun taking it back apart and turning the clamps around. Since this is such a tight squeeze, I want to make sure that I can get at these bolts here for the when if I ever have to take this thing off again, I won't have to move this. So I'm trying to center this thing in between the bolt on top here where this finger's moving and the one underneath trying to get this pipe centered in between those two before I tighten the clamps down and I'm going to keep looking around with my fingers to find if there's anything else I need to move it away from got it freed up had to clamp it in the vise and bend it back to straight and then uh, yeah Work. So I'll keep that. Might need it another time. Keep the new one on the motor.